I, I, I mean, it's not like I'm going to sit there and tell you the ways you can. Like, I know, but you're also not the only person in here. Okay, two seven. There actually, there actually really isn't anything new in two seven. But this is a very long section because it's kind of like compiling 2.1 to 2.6 in problems. So it's giving you that information in a variety of ways. So it's slow. It does, however, give us my favorite problem in the packets for the whole year. I'm going to skip number one and go right to number two. Some of you should be keen readers and understand why this one is my favorite problem and or just the weirdest thing I've ever read. The lady that wrote this packet is a moon denier. Read that question. She is a moon denier, which is so strange. She did not, but this question is written definitely from the perspective of someone who is. Did he step off the lunar module and pick up a moon rock? If he did, say that that rock would have a velocity of 24 meters per second. Oh, I have, I have no idea the understanding of that. Um, I don't. I'm assuming she meant throw the rock, but I don't know. What do you mean, why would he? I would 100% throw something on the moon because the gravity's different. And you want to see how far you can throw it. So maybe you guys should switch to philosophy. I mean, like, you guys kind of question everything. That is pretty much what philosophy is. That is a class. There's no class here at East Oh, well, that's at the college. That's a major. I mean, like, you can major in philosophy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rather than questioning why the rock was going 24 meters per second, let's just, like, go with it and work with it. So the gravity of each, I don't want to say planet, What's the correct word for that? Gravity of each body. Bo sure, body. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, is automatically determined by how big it is. And and so they, I mean, they basically know the moon's gravity. Hey, I saw your sister on the news this morning. Oh, yeah, they gave an interview. It was, it was yeah. awesome. It was pretty sudden. Like, I got a text last night saying, hey, I'm going to be on the news. I was kind of surprised because it was just out of the blue. Yeah, it was. She was just walking by on campus at the U of M, and they pulled her off to the side and were like, hey, you want to give an interview? Really? So is she like the head of the Democratic Club or something? Uh, not the head, but she's uh, part of it. Yeah. You know? Huh. I think she's um, like, like I, I don't know, vice president or something, but pretty close to the head. Yeah, that was pretty cool, though. She did a pretty good job. Yeah. I'll let her know. Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Lily was on the news this morning from the U of M. Uh, for the... Or something. <laughs> no, Matt, walk by. How do, you know How do I know his sister? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why would I yell at him about his sister if I didn't even know her? No, it was very unexpected. I, she just was on the news this morning when they were interviewing U of M Democratic Club. Okay, my fault. I yelled at them about getting on track. Uh, so the gravity of each thing determines, automatically we determine the height of an object um, from free fall, free fall, free fall or throwing. Now, um, I believe physics does, I believe you guys do things at an angle. 
as well. Basically in calc, we don't approach that. We generally will only do position velocity acceleration from free fall or linear, just straight one direction. So you will not need to do an angled motion problem. Um, so like this one, I'm assuming this rock was either just picked up and dropped or whatever it would be. And we're told 24 meters per second. And it gives us a function that says the height of the moon rock. <clears throat> Find the velocity and acceleration of the moon rock as a function of time. Okay, now yesterday right at the end of the hour is when I briefly talked about this. Position, if you have a position function, the derivative of position is going to be distance over time, and that's going to be velocity. The derivative of velocity is going to be the change in velocities over time, which is acceleration. So if it asks you to find velocity and acceleration from position, it is just asking for derivatives. So instead of us writing s prime, it is almost universally accepted to write v of t instead of s prime. So the velocity function, the derivative isn't difficult. It's just knowing what to do. The velocity would be 24 minus 1.6 t. Uh, do power rule. You do the power rule on 24 t and then negative 0.8 t squared. Did I multiply wrong? No. So instead of writing s prime, v. Yep. And this really only applies to position velocity acceleration. And then the derivative of velocity is acceleration. And in this problem, that would be negative 1.6 uh, meters per second, it looks like. So on the moon, I'm assuming the gravity, I'm assuming these are correct. I actually have no idea the gravity of the moon. I'm guessing you guys have talked about it maybe. Uh, negative 1.6 meters per second squared. So Earth is negative 9.8. So I don't know if this is accurate or not, but it seems like it should be because there's a lot less gravity on the moon. Like you guys have seen the pictures where they can bounce around and things like that. The, you've seen the fake pictures in movies um, where they bounce around, yeah. Okay, now here's where we get to the questions where people kind of stumble a little bit. Finding velocity and acceleration is not, not hard. I mean, it's just derivatives. But now you have to know what to do with them. So this one says, how long will it take for the rock to reach a maximum height? Um, I also want to let physics students know that you are not allowed to directly use the formula that finds these answers. You are supposed to approach it from a calc perspective. I know there's formulas that you guys know to find the answer immediately. We're not using those. Tell us what. I think they're more work than just knowing how to find the answer. I don't care. I mean, I'm not going to grade you double checking yourself. Uh, how do we figure this one out, though? I guess let's. So if you picture something going up and then coming back down, right there is where it's asking about. Somebody over here, there, end up. Uh... What? Who did... Why are you guys pointing at each other? <laughs> Who's she? Did somebody raise their hand and then take it back or something? What? Oh, okay. Okay, the very top of an arc. The only thing we know about the top of the arc, object goes up, pauses, stops, comes back down. That pauses and stops is actually what we use to figure out when it's at the top. The velocity talks about how fast it's moving. And 
at the very top of the arc, it's not moving because it is paused. And so we would put zero in place of velocity to find the time that happens at. And yes, I know it is negative b over 2a. We're, we're doing this from a calc perspective because we're not always going to have quadratics. So solving this, um, what's 24 divided by 1.6? Uh, 16? Is that a guess or did you type it in? Oh. It's got to be like 14, 15, 16. 15, 15. Is it 15 exactly? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So 15 seconds, because the answer is a time. This question specifically just says how long to reach the maximum height. So this is the answer. But that's not usually the question that's asked. The question that's usually asked is C, what was the maximum height? So the only thing we figured out was when it hits the maximum height. Which one of our three equations talks about height? So that's what we have to go back to. The position function is talking about the height of the object. The velocity talks about how fast the object's moving. Acceleration, how fast the velocities are changing. So we have to go back to the original function, the position function, and put 15 seconds in place of t. This can't be right. I don't know if he shot the rock out of like a t-shirt cannon or something. <laughs> Otherwise, Neil Armstrong has a good arm. Because 24, 24 meters per second is... <laughs> okay, that is good catch. That is a great dad pun. <laughs> like I'll, like I'm going to remember that next year. You got to write it down on your teacher's notes or something. <laughs> write it down on your wall. Teacher's notes. Yeah. 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 I'm not taking, I'm not writing extras. Write it on my wall? <laughs> I'm assuming somebody typed this in. It's got to be a big number. Exactly? Nope, not feet, meters. 540 meters is a lot. I, I got to I gotta feel like the moon's escape gravity, it's like at some point up there, is, can't be terribly far off. So maybe that rock made it to Earth. Okay, this is what this section is all about, though. We're going to be taking problems and using derivatives to find answers. I just love the moon denier question. Okay. Um, we absolutely are not going through every part of the notes because the notes is like eight pages long. Go to this table about velocities. So we are not, like, this is what I was trying to say when I said we are not going to be doing motion at an angle. We just do vertical or horizontal only. Don't think we'll take physics. All right, what do you want me to say? We're talking about derivatives. Um, physics gets more into, like, the angle, the, the, you know, the optimum angle, all that. So let's pretend that we are given a velocity function. Um, and I, I don't want to keep bringing up physics because you're not at a disadvantage if you're not in physics. There's just a lot of tie-in between this topic. Um, velocity is different than speed. Uh, velocity actually has a direction. So... 
positive velocity is forwards or right or up. Negative velocity is backwards or left or down. Speed is just a single number that doesn't care which direction it's moving. So that's like why in a car it's just speed because it doesn't matter which way you're aimed or moving, you're just going that number. Uh, okay, so this table, if you find it helpful, if you have a positive velocity, which direction would a horizontal line be moving? Well, apply, a particle. Couldn't you apply like negative and positive to any direction? Mm -hmm. That's all this is. This is just for somebody who's never talked about velocity before as opposed to speed, understand which positives and negatives mean. So yes, absolutely, it can be any direction. We basically only talk about right, left, up, down, or forward, backward. Okay, so a positive velocity on a horizontal line would be moving to the right. I shouldn't say right, I should say moving right. Time do we get done? Let's go five. Uh, there's no way I'm finishing this today. I didn't want to do it in two days. I wanted the earlier we can get done, the better to give you time to get ready however you need to. Negative is moving left. And you, you may already know this. This is just, I'm going to fill this out for people to look at study if they need to. Um, a zero velocity means what? Not moving or stopped. Yep. Frequently, it's going to be the moment between switching directions. Because if you're going left to be able to move, start moving right, you have to stop at some point to move right. So it's frequently going to be used as the moment between switching directions. Vertical line would be up, down. Yeah, I already got moving up there. Up, down, and zero is the same thing, not moving. Now, I tried mentioning speed is different, and I, I did already say what it meant. There's no positive or negative. This is the mathematical definition of speed, is you take the absolute value of velocity, that way it's always positive. Um, I'm, e I'm mentioning this because the calc word problems you get are very specific on the difference between velocity and speed. They will have problems about speed, and then they will have problems about velocity. Okay, acceleration. Acceleration is super hard to define. I can tell you that it is a positive change in velocities, but that usually is nothing in your mind. Like, that doesn't represent anything. The best way that I've heard it described is a positive acceleration on a horizontal line is a push to the right. So if your particle is moving to the right, and then it has a positive acceleration, that means it's being pushed to the right. But you also can have the opposite. You can have a particle moving to the right, but a negative velocity would mean it's getting a push from the right, which would slow it down. What are we doing? Okay. A zero acceleration is a constant velocity. Like cruise control.
So the way I used to describe um, acceleration positive and negative would be like stepping on the gas pedal or stepping on the brake, um, kind of dependent on a car. But I actually like this definition better because it's easier for you to picture it in your mind. If something is moving to the right and you get a push to the right, it'll go faster. If something is moving to the right and it gets a push to the left, it's still moving to the right, but it's slowing down. And so then that's an easier way to picture it in your mind. Vertical is the exact same thing, except it's a push up and down. And zero acceleration would be like no push. Constant velocity. So it wouldn't change speed. And the reason I was bringing up speeding up and slowing down is this. <coughs> this is a guaranteed question on the AP test. It will ask you if something is speeding up or slowing down. And they just throw the words in a word problem, and it seems super innocent. But you have to show a ton of work to prove if something is speeding up or slowing down. You have to show what the velocity is and show what the acceleration is, and then explain, well, they were both positive, so that's speeding up. They were both negative, so that's speeding up, which sounds stupid. But if you're moving to the left and you're given a push to the left, it will speed up to the left. It's basically like if you put your car in reverse and then hit the gas pedal in reverse, you're speeding up in reverse. So if both signs are the same, it is speeding up. Both signs are different, it slows down. OK. Um, mm. I don't know how far into this I want to go. You'll notice the notes are quite a bit longer. It feels like we're towards the end of a section, and we're not. Um, it's all about trying to give answers using derivatives from graphs. So maybe we'll do this one to give you an idea of what we're doing. And then uh, we'll stop for the day so you can ask a few questions from 2-6 or whatever it would be. Jason, you look focused in on this. Are you playing cookie clicker? No. Good. Then you're not like all my ninth graders. Every Chromebook is open. OK. You're in luck. You only have an hour left to school, and then you can take a nap. What is that graph showing us? What is it a graph of? I'll just say that. Perfect. How'd you know that? No. Uh, I was looking for an easier answer than. It says velocity right there. The graph you get will be labeled. This is a velocity and time graph. So velocity over on the left says feet per second. And then they have this weird rectangle graph, which should mean nothing to you, and that's OK. What would we get if we found the area of this shaded part? How do we generally find area? Multiply the two numbers. Yep, length times width, whatever you want to call it. So we would take six seconds times five feet per second. And then we're, we're going to move back to um, I believe that's chemistry that does the conversions a lot. Okay? It's not, we don't really convert in here, but 
where it should be helpful to you is you should know that the seconds should cancel. Because I believe that's how they, you're shown to convert. So our answer would be feet. So if you're given a velocity graph and you find the area, what does it tell us? It tells you how far you traveled. If you go at five feet per second for six seconds, you have traveled 30 feet. Which seems weird. It seems weird to find the area of a graph. You basically have never had to do that, right? Well, this graph, clearly as simple as you will possibly get. Can you guys figure out where we're moving to? You will have graphs that are not simple. And we will still find the area of them. So this section is all about what do you get when you find the area of a graph? Well, you multiply their information and whatever that answer is. Okay, so Monday, if you flip the next couple pages of notes, you will see like graphs and about 8,000 questions from the graphs. We will not be doing all the questions. There's no way we would have that much time. But I am going to pick key ones that are important for you to see. And you'll have the answers to all of them. So if you have the time to try to look through more of them, cool. I also know you're not made up of solid time. You guys have five other classes. Some of you just skip to go to volleyball games. That's how it works. OK, I'll stop there. Uh, I know it was a lot of info today. I, we kind of had to try to do that.